가장 친애하는 키들라 세계 내가 당신의 어머니를 마지막으로 본 것은 2월 9일 점심 식사 때였습니다 그 마지막 순간에 대한 인상을 남기려고 이 영상을 보냅니다 그녀는 큰 장미였습니다 완벽하게 시든 나는 당신이 타르코프스키의 영화 희생에 나오는 바흐의 마태복음을 기억하리라고 생각합니다 바흐의 마태복음은 십자가에 박힌 예수의 희생에 대한 가사를 노래하고 있는 것 같지만 저는 항상 그 곡이 어머니의 존재에 대한 노래라고 생각해 왔습니다 I'm Kabunya Ndigia, uh, Apo of Lula. Ever since we were small, she was the only grandparent I really knew because uh, my Lolo was, had already a stroke by then and my Lolo and Lola in Germany, I never really knew. So uh, she was always, you know, um, happy with jokes and stuff. So uh, it, it was, you know, yeah, I think like a Bargada or like a real good friend. Uh, so Lula will, will really be missed by.
by Baguio because I think and so now it's nice that we are we are making an urn for her out of uh, a tree so she, she can be inside a tree uh, like the way that she has been protecting all the trees here in Baguio and the nature. So my name is Barbro Svensson, my family name, and I'm from Sweden, an old friend of Per Anders. And then I'm godmother of Anna. So I know this family for a long time. First time I met uh, what I thought actually the name was Lola. Because Lola for me in Swedish is a name of a female. After a while I understand that's the word for grandmother. But for me she's still Lola. And I met her first time around 20 years ago when me and Patricia had a project here in Luzon. Uh, the name was Women's Web. Uh, but the f what I don't have a special story I can remember, but I was very, very much impressed because it was my first time in Philippines and um, I learned, I know already Patricia but these are the first time I met a lot of women here in the Philippines that are very independent, very strong, uh, like Lola also, that she was the first mayor. I was really impressed. And um, I asked her once how come that she chose something so strange to be the mayor. And she said to me that she wanted to be a good role ma model and tell other women and girls that it's possible to be powerful even if you are a, a woman. I'm Jeannie Nikki Abiyad. I'm the uh, older daughter of um, Jean de Gia. Uh, I remember Mama as uh, very loving, um, kind, very involved woman, a lot of involvements outside the house, including interest in other people. She was the one who set up organizations like the YWCA in Baguio, the girls helped in setting up the Girl Scouts here, helped in setting up the, another organization for women, Sor Optimist. But I think, although she was very busy outside the house, including being in government, she had time for, for the children and family, and we had a lot of happy times together. One thing I remember, she also had this camera, uh, which in the 1950s was uh, rare for a woman to have, and she would shoot home movies, and uh, it had to be sent to Australia to be developed. <laughs> so uh, it took a long time for us to actually see the, see the film. Uh, and we're also happy uh, and lighthearted about her passing because she lived a full life up to 98. And, um, and she went very peacefully in her sleep. No, no pain, no, no fuss. Uh, no long periods of uncertainty and so we're so glad that uh, she has now gone back to her maker so we uh, say uh, we let her go and are happy that she is where she is. Ako si Dinya Kabayaw nga uh, kasambahay ni Ma'am Dikia. Uh, matagal na rin ako sa kanila pero talagang ano, uh, um, mabait siya at mapakisama at matulungin sa amin. Kaya wala kaming masasabi at ma-miss ma miss na, uh, miss namin siya and I love you ma'am. My name is Nati Toribio. 58 years ago, uh, I was a 17-year-old Girl Scout. One of the nine who went with uh, Tita Jeannie de Guia uh, to Switzerland. But during that trip, we went around Europe for three months. 
from city to city to city. I think we went to 87 places in Europe at the time. So Tita Gini is uh, a big part of my growing up years. You know, I was 17 and, and very, uh, what do you call, idealistic, very, uh, always asking questions. And Tita Gini was the perfect leader for my group. So I'm here as uh, feeling like a family member to her. My name is Patricia De Guia Erickson. I'm the youngest daughter. And if you ask me about one important memory, it's difficult to choose. It can be a fun memory. Yes, but there's so many. Yeah. <laughs> so many, many. But I would think that Mama always tried to apportion time for family in spite of her busy schedules. Um, she was also fun to go with, of course, uh, enjoying the ordinary things that women like to do, like shopping, uh, visiting places. But also, she always advised me at different stages of my life. So, and I listened to her, and also at other times I didn't listen to her. Um, Mama was such a, I would say, a well-rounded person. Not only was she into politics and business, she was also active in sports. And so she was a model for me, as somebody I'd like, I'd, I admired. One thing also she, I remember that she told me was um, how little things so that you can preserve mental health, good mental health, because it was not only taking care of your body, but also taking care of your mind. And she would just tell me little things like, okay, do this so that you don't worry, do that. Or, and don't bring your worries to, to the bed to, to, when you're going to sleep. And um, also how you view other people, don't uh, carry a grudge uh, or not like people all the time, just so that your own mental health is... It, these are little daily exercises to keep good health in your mind. And I suppose that carried on also to good practices for the health of your soul. That's something that I like to learn from her. Yeah, I am, I am Santos Hanto Bayuka from uh, Ifugao. It's been uh, a long time that uh, uh, we're not been uh, talking about some somebody or some uh, something else about the reforestation because uh, you gave me some uh, financial to start my reforestation uh, during your healthy healthy time so now you are uh, in the you are now in heaven or somewhere else. Uh, uh, this is all, and maybe your journey is good and happy, happy, happy journey to heaven. Okay, uh, my name is Abdul Abiyad. I'm uh, one of the grandchildren of uh, Super Lola Jean. Uh, there are many recollections, but let me think of two. Um, one of the things I remember growing up was. Uh, we would call it Super Lola. There was no divide between her private and her public persona. Um, in fact, we growing up, we didn't call her Lola. We called her Ma'am. Uh, the way because all her visit, all the visitors to the house, or the visitors in her office, or people we would meet on the street, always called her uh, Good morning, Ma'am. Good afternoon, Ma'am. And so that's what we called her. And she didn't mind. And uh, and uh, it was not that she was any less a Lola to us, but uh, so it was. It, I, it, I only found it funny when we grew up and we realized that we were calling her very formally. Um, the other thing was I always, uh, I, what I admired most about her, one of the things I admired about her was her, how confident she was about everything. Uh, once she had a position, it was very hard to sway her. Uh, and uh, that would led to many long debates with her children, with her grandchildren. 
uh, but always uh, in good spirits and it was never she never lost her temper or anything like that it was uh, she was very cool about it and well, but once she knew she she just uh, stuck to her position hello this is Bori Manglapas I'm the great uh, grand nephew of uh, Jean Digia. Uh, my memories of uh, Lola Jean really are uh, mostly from my childhood because she came to the US when I was really young and uh, I was really young I don't really remember much but I remember other memories uh, during my uh, teenage years when I was in the Philippines and she would always give me encouragement and uh, she always smiled at me whenever we ate uh, uh, breakfast, dinner, lunch, and she would always just be always in a good mood, always whenever we would uh, see each other and dine together. It was always a very uh, pleasant experience with uh, Lola Jean.